It's a brand new year. And that means people are asking the same question they do every new year, which is, what's your New Year's resolution? Now, have you ever thought about having a New Year's resolution for your pets? Let's investigate. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Dr. Holmes, and welcome to another episode of Pet Doc Sherlock where we help people solve the mysteries of pets. And it is a brand new year. It's that time where people start thinking about the year before, what went well, what didn't go so well, and what they want to accomplish in this coming year, what they want to see happen. And so everybody's creating a resolution, some kind of goal, whether it be big or small, that they want to accomplish. And the problem we have with resolutions and New Year's resolutions is 80% of them are doomed to fail. That's a grade of 20, and that's terrible. And, I mean, they fail for numerous reasons. You may set the bar too high. You may come out of the gate strong and then just burn yourself out before you reach the goal you wanted to get to. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, but inevitably, most of them fail. And the reason for that is likely because people get so focused on the end goal and that they're not getting there quick enough or it all of a sudden seems so much more difficult than it did at the beginning of the year. And so your attitude and your drive just fizzles out. Well, instead of focusing on the end goal, I'd like to focus on small steps to get there. So let's say you want to lose weight for your resolution. Instead of thinking, all right, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, and that, that number's in your head, 20 pounds, 20 pounds, 20 pounds. And after three months, you've lost two. You're not going to be too thrilled about that resolution, and it's just going to peter out. Whereas, instead of thinking about the end goal, you say, okay, I want to lose weight. It'd be great to lose 20 pounds, but I'm not going to focus on that. What does it take to lose weight? Well, it takes a better diet takes more exercise and more focus and maybe more sleep. So you start looking at little things along the way that you can change. So let's cut out the trips to McDonald's. Let's eat a little bit more healthy. Let's add in a few exercises each week and then maybe get them to become every day or anything along those lines. So we look at small steps. And the other thing is we need to create resolutions or goals for our pets. They can't set them themselves, but ultimately our end goal, our end resolution would be, I want to improve my pet's life, keep them happy and healthy, and I want to improve my relationship with my pet. But again, let's not focus on the end goal. That's why I'm not really a huge fan of the idea of New Year's resolutions, but I do understand that it's a time to think about what we can improve on, and it's a time to think about what goals we do want to try to accomplish, and then we can look at the steps to get there. So some common resolutions for people and their pets would be, if your pet's overweight, let's help them lose the weight. We're the ones who give them food. We're the ones who are responsible for taking them outside to exercise them or to play with them inside and wear them out by throwing the ball up and down the hallway. So that's one resolution you could have. Another would be, I want to feed my dog or cat a healthier food. I've been feeding them kind of bottom of the shelf stuff and I'd like to, to increase the quality of food that they get. Another could just be, I want to spend more time with my pet. We are so busy in today's world. We go to work, we come home, we might go out to eat with some friends, we might throw a workout in there somewhere, and then we go to bed, we go to sleep, and we do it all over again the next day. It's hard to find little pockets of time to spend with your dog or your cat, and that's really important. That's important to building a relationship with them. That's important to making sure that you know what's going on with them, make sure they're healthy, and it's important just to stimulate their mind and body. So maybe that's a, a good resolution for you and, and your pets. Maybe it's that you need to spread out your time amongst your various pets. Maybe you have several pets and there's one that's kind of the favorite. You just think they're a little bit cuter. They like to interact with you a little bit more and they're just generally more fun. But 
not exactly fair to everybody else and so you you still want to have a relationship with each and every pet that you have granted some are going to be a little bit more attached than others but in general you still want that time with each of them so th there's lots of different things you could choose for yourself and your pet maybe you've never been able to trim your dog's nails and 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 you need to do that and you want to do that because you got new hardwood floors for christmas that's something you could try to do, taking them to a park, having them meet new people, having them meet new dogs or other cats, um, y you name it. You need to pick a resolution or goal for you and your pet um, that will just keep them happy, healthy, and enhance the relationship that you have with them and build upon the foundation that you already have. So when you're thinking about what you want to accomplish this year, don't forget about your pets. They can't set their own goals. They can't set their own resolutions. It's up to us to do that for them. So I hope that this has been kind of fun and helpful and given you something to think about. As always, the ultimate goal, the ultimate resolution is to keep your pets happy and healthy. So until next time, thanks for watching.